TikTok.com is now the most popular domains according to Cloudflare Radar. So whatever that means, really, I have my concerns and doubts regarding that. But I thought I I do an episode where we diff tool TikTok. This is our series where we pick a popular website and uh, go through diff tool and see how it is. Um, constructed and see how the back end is responding to us and i use google chrome for that and we uh, jump into the different uh, approaches that the website designers have um, decided to architect their website so we did one for twitch we did one for youtube we did one for reddit apple right and um, it's uh, about time to do one for tiktok how about we jump into it so it's probably not a good idea to go to tiktok.com homepage because i tried that and uh, basically anything i show here is really not safe for work or not safe for my channel <laughs> right so i decided instead to go to a specific web page a specific page in tiktok and view the videos for this creator and this is uh, i i don't know i don't know if some of you know and his name is the rock we'll go through the rocks page and uh, just see the beauty in this design how will we do that so hit enter and then let's just wait and you're gonna see a slower uh response time just because i'm using a vpn to kind of spice things up on top of what we're doing here so we can see these you know latencies uh, um you know spaced out right so let's go ahead and continue doing that up until here's what happened so we're seeing the page we're seeing the html page and we're seeing one of the videos actually playing and i'm gonna make sure to mute everything because otherwise i'm gonna get a copyright strike because every tiktok video is a music right and obviously can't just play a music here all right so let's go ahead and start from scratch here and uh, you can see the 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 map here the waterfall map you can see every time you see this purple an orange line maybe it's time to stop that well we're gonna resume recording after that every time you see this purple orange you know lines and green that means this indicates a, a new uh, tcp or udb connection effectively right so you can see just by looking at this map how many connections are being opened right and uh, this indicates usually uh, the use of multiple domains. So the first thing we notice here is a beautiful request to fetch the rocks page, right? And this is just the this is the plain vanilla HTML. And you can see that it's it's a very inter interesting page. So but just by itself, it's it's a rich page, right? It has login, it has all this stuff. It they fetched necessary information from the first request right that's one request that got us the followers how many followers this guy have how many likes you can see that you can see that uh the the videos but that's the layout and that's pretty much it so let's take a look let's click on that not the preview i want to take a look at this here's the thing we did a DNS request. It took 86 milliseconds. Usually is not that slow, right? But because I am using a VPN, any IP packet is uh, gets an extra delay because any IP packet that includes DNS, TCP, anything, right? At that level gets encrypted with the VPN tunnel effectively, right? So it's passing through my ISP to the VPN and get decrypted and then from the vpn i think it's in new york my vpn i just said it to be in new york and then so from california to new york and then from there we basically send the plain ip packet and that plane obviously might be also encrypted right so that that's the dns lookup and then we get the initial connection right and the initial connection here this is another thing I don't like, and uh, but it is what it is. 
Uh, this initial connection includes basically everything, includes the TCP handshake, which is the, the three-way handshake, includes any possible retries in the TCP handshake, because uh, if, you, if you had a problem with that, right? Includes any fast open that you might have done into the TCP connection, and also includes the TLS uh, connection. So uh, this is just another entry that is a subset of this, right? So don't sum these two, which is always confusing to me. And then here's the thing. This is the interesting part. Uh, time to first byte. So the request has been sent in 0.24 millisecond, right? But to receive the first byte of that response, took us 1.6 seconds. So this includes the uh, processing time, right? That the server took, obviously, right? To process the request, uh, maybe go to a database or query, which we absolutely know that they did, right? This is not a static page, right? This, let's be very specific this i'm not looking at this hopefully you can see my mouse i'm not looking at this this is definitely a dynamic page this is what we received initially right there is content here this data that is not static static what am i saying static it's not a static so they actually built this html page by actually querying this database right and that uh, took what took 1.6 seconds to do that, right? So probably things are cached, right? When I say cached, it's probably some some sort of a, a middle tier cache. They didn't hit the database to do to this query. It's probably there's million layers of caches uh, that has the rock information. And also not only the processing time, which is this query to the database and building the, the, the HTML page, but it also includes the time to receive the request. And you can really interpret this into many layers because any interface uh, before we hit the back end, the real back end, any load balancers, any API gateways might have actually intercepted the connection and then retransmitted it on the back end. And that time is included in this 1.66 seconds, right? So that's why you in the back end, you have to really pay attention to what are you doing in these middle tier layers before you, your request actually reaches the back end, especially if it's layer seven um, reverse proxies, you know, in general load balancers, API gateways. And then obviously the rest of the content download, but that's the total thing. The total is 2.16 seconds. That includes the TCP handshake, the SSL. What are we using here? They're using TLS 1.3. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it is, it is faster than TLS 1.2, obviously, right? And part of this negotiation, TikTok decided to use the HTTP tube protocol, obviously. Once we got that, a flood of a lot of other requests was were, were initiated as a result. You can nicely uh, see that the number, the connection ID here. So all of these guys, by the way, you, you can never do this in HTTP 1.1 or HTTP 1.0 for that matter, right? See uh, the number of parallel requests being sent on the same TCP connection? Boy, you're downloading all these resources in parallel, which is not which is not bad, right? If you can avoid it, that would be great, right? But if you can't, like in this case, HTTP 2 is great for this because each request will be sent in, this, in its own stream ID uniquely, right? Every time you see this orange, line that indicates that there is a new tcp connection and up until till here this is what i'm interested in this is very i want you to pay attention to this we're downloading the first video guys up until here we didn't even load the uh the videos themselves as items i didn't see any request what we saw is a bunch of javascript and a bunch of images there is not a single request that gives metadata about the videos that the rock has okay they're none but here it is here's one what does it do it's a request 
to download a video okay and there's a, the id of the video there's some videos there's a link and this is a status 206 which is which is basically refers to partial content that's how you basically this is the de facto delivery of http uh, live streaming you know where you're you're you you basically saying okay i want to download video but you send it in parts right and you say okay this is the range right and uh, you keep streaming the content from the back end to the front end you know slowly right and instead of downloading the whole thing right so this way you can play the video as you receive it from the back end let's go ahead and open that okay let's mute that there's no music but we can mute it but you can see that this is the video and if you noticed this is exactly the first video right so the first video was actually downloaded very interesting right so what happened is the HTML page probably had a reference to only the first video or probably a, a subsequent JavaScript that requested that first video to be downloaded. And, and this is a, probably a decision made by the TikTok designer. They said, okay, I want, I want immediately to play the latest video when someone visit a page. And here's some other things that I didn't really get. Like we, you will see this very often. Uh, my guess is these are uh, requests to track the client. You know, it's called list. And obviously, always you're going to see it. Uh, you're going to see uh, an options, you know, pre-flight request because we're going to another domain. That's another thing. Anytime you try to post something, right? Uh, post is not safe method, right? So if you're going cross domain, so always the browser always asks for an options. So it does a pre-flight right this is all the course things that we talked about yeah so you can see the post request here and when you see the payload that we sent it's pr practically i think just really tracking the movement of the client that's probably see because you see the chrome uh, macintosh which is my device any really information because we're gonna see this request getting sent frequently a lot and it's it's not a small either. It's one kilobyte. Yikes! Right? It's all, it's all network bandwidth. That's really not necessary. So we're gonna continue up until we find the interesting request. And here's here is it. This request. This request is an options request. Why? Because it's a it's a uh, it's a pre-flight because we're going to another domain. And guess what? why why are we going i'm on desktop yet we're going to the mobile site so just that is absolute waste in my opinion why is the api only available in the mobile you might say that nobody's actually using the web which i i, I get i i can agree with you nobody's using the web but still I mean, you think you can, they can use the same domain, but apparently not, right? So they're using all the APIs are located in the mobile version, m.tiktok.com. But that is kind of a cost if you're browsing on the on the web. Again, nobody's browsing TikTok. Very few are browsing TikTok on the web, apparently, right? So that results, we're going to a different domain because we're on TikTok.com and we're going to m.tiktok.com. And again, this is not me as a user. This is the fault of the designer of the app, right? They did this on purpose, whether on purpose or not. This is resulting on an additional cost, right? Of this pre-flight, which is absolutely not needed. If you think about it, if you're on the same domain, if you're on TikTok.com, right? Then you would not be doing this options thing. But we're doing it anyway. All right, so we're going page. We just saw all this stuff, and this is the most and this is the most interesting request. MS token. If we go to this guy, here is the actual videos themselves, right? And here's the thing. Right? So you can see that these are the items that represent the video. So kindness matter always sip your Z zero. Right, the script, that's the description of the video and uh, the ID of the video, music, if it's already there is a music, right? And the links to the music, uh, stats, how many views did this video get, right? How many shares? And uh, the video itself, with, it's all metadata, 
right? And you can see that there is the cover, which is the thumbnail of the video itself. And there is the download address. So if I actually copied this guy, right? The link to download the video. So so it's a it's a really restful uh, API, you know? That's that's basically how REST work. You can see that the video is being downloaded. So this, this is basically how REST works, you know, a link that gives you content that gives you links to more content, right? But here's, here's the interesting part here, right? That could be a, like a, a further optimization and, and TikTok ends. Since I know that the author of this particular page is The Rock, right? It, it is really costly to return static information about the author the whole author object is being returned here you know with every item so this is the author this is the rock right go to another item this is the author the rock right another item the author is the rock this makes sense if you're like browsing some sort of a i don't know the main page then your explore feed but it doesn't really make sense to return this in the main page itself. So there is a lot of optimization that could be happening here, to be honest. Like eh, some 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 users might say, oh, yeah, we're even returning the author's stats, right, with every item. That's just, that's a, that's the bloat of this JSON. There is no need to return all this information at all. You know, it's just, there's so much stuff already. And uh, this is interesting, right? Uh, you can see that this is a paging uh, request where we're saying, hey, by the way, there's there's more. If you scroll, there's more. And here's where the final cursor position, right? <laughs> so obviously, TikTok, they know what they're doing on their back end. This is the most optimal way where you kind of put a cursor where, where you have reached and then send that cursor with the next page request so that we can use a specific filter predicate to 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 index our way to that location and then eliminate or uh, and then fetch the next page effectively this is as opposed of using offset which is really bad you never use offset when you're doing um, a, a paging request offset you know, select a star, blah, 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 blah offset this, <laughs> that kills your performance. If you're like, especially if you, if you, you know, have one relation and then you're offsetting, I don't know, a million, you know, you reached like a, a really a large page that really is bad. And I talked about that in, in another video, I'm going to reference it to you if you're interested, but yeah, this is basically what's happening here. And, and as I scroll, let's go ahead and and, and uh, let's go and resume recording here. And then I'm just going to hover my mouse over one of the videos. You can see immediately when I do that, we get a download. And how did ha this happen? This happened because that item had a link to the actual URL of the video, as we saw in the metadata, obviously, right? The final thing we're going to talk about is let's continue scrolling uh, up until we see, you can see that now, we're downloading some more metadata, right? But only the images really, I think, right? So you can see that the thumbnails are being downloaded as we scroll, but not the content, right? So this indicates that the client actually have the items cached, right? Which was downloaded with this other request. But now as we scroll more, and as we continue requesting, we're gonna eventually run out of the items. Yep, there you go. That's the next request, right? to fetch the rest of them. So I, I scrolled a lot and eventually, apparently, we reached the end of uh, The Rock's feed. He didn't apparently post a lot of videos. So has more equal false and this is the last cursor we reached and these are all the videos. So apparently, I guess this is the, the his first video, maybe? I'll bring, ba I'll bring The Rock, you bring the sand. That's his first video, apparently. So yeah, guys, this was Div Tooling TikTok. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.